tutor around right before they broke, he said, hey, look, I don't really care about your production, Emmanuel. I care about your effort because we need that effort to really trickle down to the rest of our team. So both of those guys will come off the bench again today. Emmanuel Okorafor, the 6'9 freshman, playing his third game with the Cardinals. And Baba Miller will be playing in his seventh game after sitting out a 16-game suspension mandated by the NCAA to start the year. Missed one game because of tonsillitis, but he should have a big impact for the Seminoles, who are 5-7 and seven in league play, and as you mentioned, favored by five in this game on the road. And on their first possession, a beautiful set to find Jalen Worley for the layup. And Mr. Everything for Louisville, L. Ellis, the 6'3 senior point guard, but he's got to do more than just direct the ship. He's got to score, he's got to pass, and he's got to take care of the basketball. Yeah, averaging 34, 35 minutes per night. He's expected to do everything for this team, but also defensively got caught falling asleep there on the first possession of the ball game in the ball. On the James Miss, James J. Trainer throws it down. A legacy his father Jason Osborne played a couple of years here at U of L and McDonald's All-American at the local male high school. Now look if you're withers, that is something that Green does exceptionally well. A 40 plus point percent three-point shooter on the floor. And when you play three-point shooters, run them off the line. Always keep your hands up. Make sure you're trying to deter their vision. You can't let him see the basket cleanly. No defense at the rim as Sidney Curry goes right to it. You know, we were talking about trainer before had a big double double in their last game and you need a guy like that to be energetic and when he's able to get on the boards I think that's a really big thing for their team Caleb Mills fouled by James and yes Jay the Cardinals are coming off a rare win just their third of the season Wednesday they beat Georgia Tech 68 58 L Ellison company presented Kenny Payne with a game ball afterward because it represented his first ACC victory at his alma mater I'm going to say this to people at home. It may ruffle some feathers for Louisville fans. We just need to stop the conversation about Kenny Payne not being here after one year. I'm going to set the tone for the broadcast, Doug, and say that this world that we live in, in which you feel like you need results yesterday, considering what this program has been through, not to throw anybody under the bus, but there are a lot of, pe lot of kids on this team that I'm not sure they felt like there was a real connection before Kenny Payne took over. So right now, he's trying to do the right thing with his team, trying to reestablish the culture. And frankly, this team is trying to buy in, but they need to play with a sense of urgency. And Kenny Payne has it. It just needs to trickle down to the rest of their team. So guys like Ellis, or guys that are trying to bring it, we understand it's not the standard of excellence that represents Louisville basketball, but it, it takes more than a year to rebuild Rome, and that's what you need to We need some patience for a guy like Kenny Payne, who's going to bring the right kids in here eventually to get this program back at the top. Matthew Cleveland to Worley. Nice looking three on two break for the Seminoles. Yeah, I agree with you, Just Jay. want to say it, Doug. I mean, there, it bothers me in today's culture a little bit. There is still a lingering IARP cloud the last five years. Now, you don't have to worry about any sanctions coming, but the reality is that's a long time to have that cloud over the program. You bring in a new head coach, even though he knows the lay of the land. He's one of the great Cardinals as a player and a long-time accomplished assistant coach. It's going to take some time. We're watching practice today, Doug. And, you know, look, I'm just going <laughs> to... We always keep it a buck here when we, you and I talk, Doug. First off, when you go into any practice, okay, in any team that's an elite team, they're guys that are already there in dead sweats. Okay, like they are working out, they are getting ready. You know, I saw a couple of guys there today. And then after practice, who's getting into work after practice? I know that's who Kenny Payne is. That is who he is, that's who his staff is. That's who Danny Manning is, that's who Nolan Smith is, that's who Gaines is, who played here at Louisville. All these guys take on that kind of weight. So it's about finding out who on this current team wants to put in the work and effort and consistently maintain that kind of mindset to be the best version they could be, and he's finding that out this year. And each of those staff members you mentioned, Jay, oh, by the way, we're all first-round draft picks back in their day. They know what it takes and trying to impart that onto this group. And this morning's was the third Louisville practice I've attended in person this year. 
And the first two were clearly uninspiring. They are making progress. This morning was better than it was a month ago and two months ago. So it does feel like there is progress being made. And by the way, Doug, that wasn't a shoot around. That was a full hour and a half practice That's today. That's true. That's true. Getting back to the ba basics, teaching them about back cuts, flex cuts, some of the basics of the game that this team is still trying to build on their IQ. That's what he does. Darren Green with another triple. He started to emerge for Florida State as one of the leaders, taking Baba Miller under his wing. You know, when you think about Florida State basketball, you think about depth and you think about the ability to apply pressure. What's different for Coach Hamilton and this team is that they don't really have the depth to throw as many bodies at you as they would like. And also, when you think about the style in which they play, when you're having six or seven guys that are playing 30 minutes plus per night, it makes it hard to maintain that style of play and that energy and effort. Off the steal, Darren Green now with eight points, and the timeout comes from Louisville. The turnovers have been a problem for Louisville all year long. But Darren, and you know, the preseason polls are always poo-pooed by the head coaches, and here's another example why the ACC has not worked out how most people thought it would be. I mean, look, uh, look at a team like Pittsburgh. I mean, literally, they got old so quick with the transfer portal, and they're at the top of the ACC. Clemson, obviously, there with Brad Barnell. He's done one heck of a job. UVA, I think UVA, the UVA dropped their game to Virginia Tech today. They did, right, before they us. Just did. But still, older teams are what's ruling college basketball right now. When you think about the Louisville team, 340th in NCAA as it relates to age. Uh, that's a big thing. Al Ellis, the fourth leading scorer in the ACC at 17 per game, is yet to score. Jalen Withers muscles his way into the paint. But that's the second consecutive turnover for Louisville. Matt Cleveland cashes in at the other end. Florida State is so active. Their hands, multiple people drawn to the ball of some Louisville penetration. And... They are getting out and getting going, and we talked about that before the game, Doug. Their ability to get points in transition really makes it easier for them scoring the ball. Sometimes when they get a little bit stagnant in their half-court offense. Withers' shooting confidence is off the charts right now, coming off a 19-point game against Georgia Tech Wednesday, where he was 4 of 6 from the arc. Kenny Payne said that shows you what he's capable of, but he was more interested in the fact that Jalen also had a season-high 13 rebounds. They need that type of energy enthusiasm and effort from everybody on the roster look the reality for louisville is they have to take care of the basketball we saw that in their last game which is one of the main reasons they got to win 10 turnovers in the first half as opposed to five turnovers in the second and that kind of ball security is what you need as with this backs down another one the patience by him offensively he is at about 45 percent on the year and going up you see the numbers last eight games coming into this one for the 6'9 redshirt junior out of Charlotte. Green spins, steps back. Withers sticks with him. Withers has that size and that length where if Green gets by him, he can block it at the rim. Cam Corn has been very good lately for Florida State. Those were his first two points. 6'10 freshman from Allen, Texas, averaging about eight points per game. Ellis spins around Corrin, missed the shot. Rebound comes to Chandler Jackson, a freshman wing. Up ahead, Green. That's his first miss three of the afternoon. He leads all scores with eight. Tough shot. James misses the transition three. Why is that a tough shot? Well, just because you had multiple possessions where the game was moving really fast. You would like to see Louisville try to get something in the half court. Sometimes you just feel like the pace of the game, right? You don't want it to be as frenetic. You want it to be a little bit more in poise with what you have on the floor with your team in the rotation. Cameron Murphy Corin gets that middle name because it's his mom's maiden name. Makes it a nine-point ball game. FSU on top. Got to move. Got to move. Ellis. Offensive foul. Yep. Got that hand or forearm or elbow up around the face or neck area of Chandler Jackson. Can't extend that right arm into the face there offensively. They got to keep it tucked inside, and he got Jackson with a really good one right to the face. I see Ellis turn this corner right here, and yeah, that's that right hand just extending, slapping Jackson right in the face. That's a blatant offensive foul. You know, a lot of times for Florida State, the, the size and length of their defenders when you're being guarded 
by guys who are 6'7", 6'8", on the perimeter. They can play off smaller guards like Ellis and contest his shot late, and it makes it a lot more challenging for a guard as dynamic as him because Austin, there's not a lot of room to drive. And for him, he has to be patient with an offense. I know there's a lot of pressure on him, obviously with being their team's leading scorer, but he has to find little quicker buckets in transition, utilize head fakes more. Yeah, that's a blatant offensive foul right there. That's tough. And you know, we had a uh, nice talk last night and again today with Florida State assistant coach R.J. Barsh. He had the scout for this game and he said, for L. Ellis, he rejects ball screens and drives left. So on the scouting report, they knew where he was going. We've seen him drive left repeatedly early on. And it's just a matter of what the uh, officials on this particular play come up with. You know what's interesting, Doug? Um, coming back and calling several college basketball the yeah, welcome games this back year. Again, by thank the you, way. thank you, brother. But doing a lot more NBA. You see how NBA games, the scouting reports are so detail oriented about the strengths and weaknesses of players. And you see defensively teams that literally execute that, always sending you or noticing like what your pattern is. And for a guy like Ellis right now, I, I think that's one of the good things you're seeing maturity-wise for Florida State, recognizing that, hey, like here are his tendencies. When he does, when he drives left, he has a tendency to try to go all the way to the rim as opposed to pull up and really stacking the rim, understanding that. And that, that's how teams get better. Right, your ability to retain that information and then execute that on the defensive end, which I know fans, you hear that, but it's a lot more challenging to actually execute because so many players are more offensively mindset these days. Our officials, Lee Cassell, Tommy Morrissey, Jeff Pond came up with that. It was just a common foul. And we've got our two highlight players into the ball game now at the same time. Baba Miller, the 6'11 freshman for Florida State, and Emmanuel Okorafor, the 6'9 freshman for Louisville. Okorafor is number 34 in white. Miller is number 11 in black. And now the 6'11 freshman trying to keep L. Ellis out of the lane. Everybody's in those gaps when Ellis has the ball. There's nowhere for him to drive. Tough shot. Bank it in! I was about to say this is why his shooting percentage is not what it probably should be because he has to take so many of those shots up against the shot clock. But that time, he puts it in. And the shot goes in, Kenny Payne is yelling at everybody, this is where you need to be more engaging defensively. Where is the communication? Who is talking on the floor? Foul away from the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if it's on Emmanuel Okorafor. Indeed it is. But those are fouls that the coaching staff can put up with. They love his energy and enthusiasm. The Cardinals hanging around. What a women's basketball triple header we have for you tomorrow afternoon on ESPN2 and the app. Deja Kelly and number 11 North Carolina square off against Haley Van Lith and Louisville in our first game at noon Eastern. Then Angel Reese and undefeated number three LSU taking on a Texas A&M team. And we cap the afternoon with a Big Ten matchup between Taylor Mikesell and number 10 Ohio State and Diamond Miller and number eight Maryland. That is tomorrow afternoon right here on ESPN2. The women's basketball program here at Louisville as you saw lots of banners up inside the KFC Young Center and you get a chance to check them out tomorrow. By the way uh, pulling up here not being here for seven years. Let's see Florida State knock down three. This place I'm like is this the Dallas Mavericks Stadium. I mean this place is incredible. The facilities here alone are just off the charts from the practice facility to the Young Center. It is absolutely big time here. Fourth turnover, all live ball turnovers, and immediately the Knowles and Jalen Worley add to their total. It's an 11-point game. Okay, so execution out of a timeout leads to a Florida State three and a turnover in a transition bucket for Florida State. Four okay. turnovers, six points off those four turnovers so far. Jalen Worley picks up his first personal foul for the Seminoles. It comes with everybody being tight with the basketball. Louisville just a little bit laxed 
with their defensive effort as it relates to communication on that last play with the house three and then also the dribble with Ellis. It's good to see Naheem McLeod back out there for Florida State, the seven foot four inch sophomore who hasn't played the last couple of games being under the weather. He is back to feeling good. I think the official phrase from the Florida State basketball program was that it was the winter crud going around. Hmm. Everybody has a little something. Sounds like all my kids at home right now. <laughs> Uh, good to see Big Naheem out there. Also off the bench from Florida State, Tom House, who had the three-point bucket a moment ago. Second foul on Darren Green. Like the play right here by Withers. You got a smaller player on you. You got the size. You got the frame. Body, body. You know, so many times bigger players when he sees smaller guards on them on the perimeter, want to settle for a perimeter shot. No. Keep that elbow in, dip that shoulder, use that extra body weight, and body your way to the bucket. Whenever I would see Green on me if I were Withers, I'm putting him in the basket. Well, Withers is 6'9", Green is 6'5". Jalen's father, Curtis Withers, started Charlotte in the early 2000s, 1,750 points. I know from your perspective, that's not a lot. It's a lot of points. But don't do that to me. Else. Don't do that to me. It's a lot of points. <laughs> but you know what, Doug? When, when he was able to get that ball into the drive, it wasn't off a of standstill or stagnant offense. That ball had moved around. You got the defense to rotate multiple times. This way, guys couldn't be in gaps when Withers was able to take advantage of the height. Cleveland back into the game with a basketball, along with Worley, and House on the perimeter. A lot of size and length inside for the Seminoles, as we've become accustomed to, with McLeod at 7-4 and Miller here at 6-11. Great ball movement to find Cleveland for the dunk. Land. Swing it, swing it. By the time Trainer got it to Withers, yeah, it was too late. He Ellis put, along the baseline. He put the ball down the ground instead of just looking at the open play. First shot, Withers has missed. Again, he has been on fire lately. There's so many times guys just want to put the ball on the ground. Oh, look for the rotation pass. Way too strong for Miller. There's McLeod to clean it up. This is the largest lead of the afternoon at 13. It's got to work to get open. These are the things that we saw in the shoot around where guys, you just have to work. Guys have to be active and actually make themselves available for the pass. And you're seeing here, they're in the zone, just miscommunication. They raise. The back half of the zone, and he sneaks in Cleveland from the weak side on the baseline wide open. Those are the types of miscommunicational breakdowns that if you're Kenny Payne, it makes you lose your mind on. Roosevelt Wheeler into the game for Louisville. Should What's also say that Brandon Huntley Hatfield is getting closer, still uh, out with injury. But they say that it's probably sooner than later that he'll be back on the floor for the Cardinals. Good job by Ellis fighting over, switching, getting Withers back on Cleveland. Cleveland lobs for McLeod, comes down with it, and he was fouled by Wheeler. All right, so I want you to look at this right now. Look at the difference. I wish we could zoom out. Every Florida State player came and got in the huddle. Every player in a white jersey was fragmented. To me, just seeing that here from the booth, that is a team that is not together. That is a team that lacks the ability to communicate to each other what the next possession is, because everybody has their heads down about that last play where, no, don't get stuck in the mud. Focus on what's about to come so we can get ourselves out of the funk and get to the next possession. House no, long rebound withers. Swing it. Under nine minutes to go in the half, Ellis penetrates with a paint touch, finds Mike James for the three. Cleveland traps down the rebound. 
Cleveland crosses over Ellis, goes into the lane. Just couldn't finish. But you keep seeing things that make you scratch your head, Jay. Oh, because if I'm Ellis right there, why, why am I taking a stab for a steal? I'm just going to allow them to go down and have a three on two on the break. Kamar Lance, the freshman out of Hillcrest Prep in Arizona, has his first three. You see, he had a good game against Georgia Tech last time out. He was a top 40 recruit coming out of high school from Indianapolis, Indiana. Here's Baba Miller, thought about it from the corner. Under eight to go. McLeod, just taller than everybody, lays it in. What great patience and what a good pass by Worley right there. Louisville did a really good job of when he rolled, they bumped him from the weak side and they recovered, got back to the man. But unfortunately, due to his size and frame, he could just throw the ball over the top. Ellis threw a lob. Wheeler wasn't looking for it. Louisville keeps the ball back to Ellis for three. Here comes Worley, cut off by James, back out to House. Withers with another rebound. Florida State has won six straight in this series, trying to make it seven in a row here on the road this afternoon. We'd we'll love to see Louisville run a set. I mean, the last five or six possessions in the game, I understand they're doing things off dribble drive opportunities, but this feels like their offense doesn't really have a lot of rhythm. Blocking foul. And that'll take us to break. 33, 19 Seminoles over the cards. Arby's new $5. Loaded chick. You think at four and eight, they're going to do what they did last year and get into the NCAA tournament? I think this. They're averaging eight threes a game right now. If they can get that up the rest of the way to 10 threes a game, the way that offense moves, I do think they're in. 13 to 15 wins last year to get the tournament, and they replicated. Let's get back to the turtleneck dawn in Doug Sherman. Thank you, sir. With Jay Williams, I'm Doug Sherman, 33-19. And yeah, we, when Virginia Tech got Hunter Couture back, they go right back to being as dangerous yes. as anybody in the ACC. Spread the ball, knock down the three, play aggressive defense. And, and I'll be honest with you, Doug, when I watch UVA play, UVA is a, a really good team. They're together, and they're, they minimize mistakes. But Virginia Tech is extremely talented. And UVA, there is no team in college basketball that is extremely dominant. Houston's a really good basketball team, too, but they're beatable as well. Yeah. Feels wide open to me this year. And it is. When we get to the ACC tournament, I mean, who are you going to make the odds on favorite? I'll look at you for that information. Louisville playing from behind on its home floor again today, looking for its second straight win. That's going to be a goal ten. No chance of going yeah, in, but McLeod knocked it away anyhow. McLeod with that size and with that length. I mean, there's no need to even block that. That ball is going to be extremely short. And look, you take him as you get him for Louisville. But still, to me, like the execution once again after a timeout just wasn't there for Louisville. Well, Leonard Hamilton told us a few weeks ago he's got to get more playing time for Tom House. That is coming again today. 6-7 freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Good shooter. Here's Cleveland. Good defense by Trainer. I think he got a piece. Louisville will keep as Corrin was on the end line trying to save it. Great deep by Trainer. Just stay down. Use that long wingspan. He once again, due to his size over Cleveland, he can contest shots late, which means he can wait for Cleveland to leave his feet and then use that length and jump later and still contest or block the shot. Percy Miller's come off the Louisville bench to play the point while L. Ellis gets a rare rest. Now give it. Give him a ball fake, trainer. Give him a ball fake at the post and give him a skip pass. The guy's got to see the floor. Here goes Hersey, move. gets rid of the defender. Great the move. Wide open lands for good three. Move. Now that's good basketball. Get into the gap, utilize a ball fake like I just said before. Give Florida State to compact their defense, contract, and kick it out for a three. Mills, tough shot off the window, no.
James tied up. And it's a held ball thanks to the defense by Jackson. And you're going to see Miller get into these guys here. This is kind of patience I'm talking about. Gets in, gets the man off his feet, and able to kick it out for a wide open three. I love the patience by Miller to get into those gaps, be strong with the basketball, and kick it out to a wide open three point shooter. Papa John's just flipped pizza night on it. Doug Sherman, Jay Williams. Make him say, huh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, How do you no, know no. that reference? No, no, How do you no, know no. that? Why not? His dad is huge, Master P. Come on. Master P used to hoop back in the day he now, did. too. Okay, I've seen it. He did. Percy, uh, NBA preseason with the Hornets back in 89-90. I mean, I still would have given him 30, but, I mean, he, he's okay. <laughs> he was all right. He would have gotten six or eight. <laughs> That's all right. Not known as a defensive player, Doug. He was a shooter. Here's his son. Five minutes to go in the half. Get it back to Percy, the son of Percy. Here come the Knowles. Pass a little ahead of Jackson, and he can't save it. Let's see what I like about the shot for Louisville. You know, the first seven or eight minutes of the ball game, they were getting penetration, but there wasn't relocation after the penetration, right? There was yep. a lot of stagnation. People just standing around offensively. But when you are able to get into those gaps, give me a back cut. Move without the ball. Move to open spots. You know, and keep your hands ready to shoot because you're going to get wide open looks against Florida State. They do contract their defense off penetration. Florida State just committed its first turnover of the ball game. Over 15 minutes in. Trying to find Wheeler on the post. Knocked out of bounds by Caleb Mills. Louisville will keep it with 12 to shoot. Wheeler just has to hold his guy off on that seal. Get a ball picked by the guard. Throw it over the top. They'll have an easy one at the rim. Allison Withers back in for Kenny Payne. He talks to Miller and Trainer who head out. And a stoppage before the inbound. Do you know any good Master P songs? The, uh, you I think say I just it. sang one for you. You did, but do you know the name of it? To me, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> You're so quick-witted. I like it. That was well played on your part. <laughs> I don't know about that. I like my music, though. Yeah, I was surprised today jumping in the car with you. You had a little Drake on. You had a little, little, little Uzi. I was like, what the hell is going on here, Doug? What are, you're surprising me. Couldn't change the station. <laughs> Couldn't figure it out. Couldn't figure it out? No, it's what I listen to. <laughs> Withers lost his footing. Seminoles again on the run. Cleveland to the rim. Look, Kenny Payne and the staff. Those careless turnovers with the ball just drive you crazy. Ellis gets those two back. Unforced turnovers, Dan. Unforced turnovers will always lead to the detriment of a team. And that is the story of the 2022-23 Louisville Cardinals, averaging about 16 turnovers per game. Hard to win ball games when you turn it over that frequently. Cam Corin off the jab step puts it in. He has pro-like moves. I mean, that's the second time he's caught the ball, turned and faced, seeing that the defense is actually coming at him from the weak side, and looked at the defender's hands. Their hands are down. He's going to shoot a midi. Well, that shouldn't come as any surprise that Leonard Hamilton has a 6'10 freshman with pro potential, right? I mean, that's been his M.O. for the better part of his two decades in Tallahassee. And look at him. He's calling for the ball. Right now. See. Worley back to Mills. Just really bad rotation by Louisville. He had two players on one player. Pass deflected out of bounds, and that takes us to our next media timeout. Seminoles up 11. Spin, Crean, and Cuff coming up on the halftime report here. We got two top 10 teams. Both went down. Virginia, Virginia Tech will break down the Hokies' forthcoming schedule and also KU. Iowa State, that was a tough one for them. Great highlight, though. Coach, what do you see here? Well, Florida State's doing a great job of getting the ball in the paint. They're sharing the ball. But Jay Will said this a little bit ago, and this is the problem with Louisville. They make a mistake or things aren't going right. They get their head down so fast. It's such a long game. They're down 11. There's a whole half coming. Long game, long season, but they're building for the future at this point. And I like what Jay's talking about, right? It's, it's, it's about much further beyond this year. If anything, just stop listening to the nonsensical narrative. If we just don't acknowledge nonsense, 
Maybe they'll just move on. Nonsensical narrative. Fellas? I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you guys more. And I, I look, I, I'm always on social media, Doug. I, I hear what people are saying to me right now on Twitter. I'm not trying to come here and literally fly into Louisville and give people lectures. I like the passion by the Louisville fan base. I just know how difficult it is to actually reestablish a culture. It, it doesn't happen overnight. Now, there are certain things that you need Louisville to do. They need to play with a sense of urgency. And there does need to be a sense of togetherness with this squad. But sometimes, Doug, that happens. I'll be, I'll keep it honest with you. Some, some guys may not be here next year. You know, not everybody's buying in. If they're not buying in, Kenny Payne has to find out who wants to buy in. If they want to buy in, they'll be here next year. If you don't, they'll be on the first thing out of here now. Yeah. That's just keeping it honest with you about the, the business of the sport. Absolutely. I mean, it goes without saying, even under the best of circumstances, you can count on people going. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a complete roster overhaul. Building comes to life as Lance hits the pull-up. He's got double figures. See, Back this, to a six-point game. This is what Louisville fans want. They just want to see that you care. That you're playing with the energy and the passion. They want to celebrate you. All they ask for is effort. Got to get a hand up. One of the great fan bases in the country. They've been averaging about 11, 12,000, which is down considerably, but still a pretty good number for a team that's Three and 19. This is why I would love to see Louisville run a set. James missed from the corner. You know, you just have multiple possessions, four or five in a row, where the game is just going at this pace. We'd love just to see them get a high efficient shot off the set. And these are the kind of defensive breakdowns I was talking about as it relates to Louisville. Just watch Withers on this play here. I mean, he's on the ball. He leaves his man. Why, why are you leaving your man? That's Ellis's man. It forces him in a defensive rotation. Florida State knocks down the three. And that's your fourth year captain doing that. That's the other thing that I think scratches your head as much as anything. Doug, love defense as much as you love offense. Love breaking down your opponent mentally in the defensive end just as much as you want to score 30. That's when your team goes to the next level as a mindset. Swing. Well, this is a season high in ACC play for points in the first half for Florida State. They scored 39 at Notre Dame. L. Ellis denied. Both Mills and Miller were there. It was off of the Seminoles, so Louisville will keep with eight on the shot clock. I'm going to keep saying this. It makes it really difficult for Ellis at his sides to find penetration when you got trees down there. And you, you, got, you got trees, you got guys 6'8", six, 6'9", six, Ellis only being 6'1", six, 6'2", six, got to find a different way to finish at the rim. Or Kenny Payne has to put them in a vehicle that allows Ellis in an isolated situation to get a shot off. Final 40 seconds of the half. Seminoles up by eight. They get Corin on the switch. He doesn't take got advantage sleeping. instead. Kicks to the corner. Withers got caught sleeping, standing straight up on the weak side. This is what you need from a guy who's a veteran on this team. But to the baseline, in a stance, being alert about man you ball. Seeing the ball at the top of the key, knowing that you're guarding the shooter in the corner. Those are the daggers that absolutely destroy your confidence as a Louisville basketball player. And instead, Mills buries the three. James with an air ball at the other end. How about the elevation by J.J. Draper? Final two seconds, Worley tied up by Lands. And that will put the first 20 minutes in the books. Florida State, 45, Louisville 36 at the break. Look, for as poorly as Louisville has played, they're only down by nine, they're still in this ball game. And those are the plays, if you're Kenny Payne, you're saying, what are we doing, guys? We had to play with a sense of urgency. Look, that's all they talked about today at practice. They said, hey, look, our energy has to be everywhere. We have to have a sense of urgency, and we need to play for each other. And for a guy like Withers, that's a guy that I'm, I'm singling out in the locker room. I am addressing it head on by saying, I need you to be better, and I need you to give us energy Woo! on the defensive end. Mills on the lob right and Worley with the layup. Worley has been great against the Cardinals this year.
In addition to that bucket, eight assists, no turnovers so far in the two games. By the way, catches Ella standing up. Those are the kind of plays I'm talking about, though. Coming out of halftime, here's what we're going to run, our first offensive set. Here's how we're going to take advantage of it. Louisville wants to play gaps. They want to get up in passing lanes. If they do, we feel them overplaying. Let's head in with the backdoor cut, lob at the rim. Second foul on L. Ellis. And by the way, you can do that when you're not putting pressure on the ball right. as well. Right. Great balance for Florida State as we begin the second half. Four guys now with eight points, two with six. And that stays that way. Worley, Corin, Mills, and Green all with eight points as the Seminoles have led throughout, led by as many as 14 in the first half. Florida State defensively switches everything. That's why you've got this matchup. Ellis trying to drive on Corin, and the help defender comes over. Cleveland not called for the foul. It's Corin who gets the personal. Okay, here, another example. Another example. Florida State gets in the group huddle. Louisville is scattered. Fractured, yep. Nobody's talking to anybody. Everybody is playing individually. That's the difference right there between a team of individuals and a collective unit. So is that your captains, Ellis, Withers, and Curry, or is that head coach Kenny Payne? I Whose responsibility I, is that? Well, it, it's somebody on the floor. I would say it's typically it's the point guard responsibility to bring everybody in. Uh, but I think that's kind of this team lacks a little bit of that leadership, that floor general, to put everybody in their place. I'm sitting next to a floor general right now. Hey, Steven's <laughs> sitting right next to me. He would have put everybody in the huddle. Yeah, the uh, Louisville legend going to join us in just a few minutes. Peyton Siva back to watch his alma mater. Be interesting to hear his thoughts about uh, the state of affairs with his beloved program. Another turnover, two on one. Hey! Cleveland on the business end of the alley oop. I mean, there are a lot of things I don't even want to have to call out. I mean, to see three white jerseys jog back after a turnover is disappointing. Extremely disappointing. We're bringing big. We've seen this for years for Leonard Hamilton, getting a lot of points in the paint again today for the Seminoles. 32 points in the paint for Florida State. Able to get points in transition off of turnovers. The lack of communication by Louisville has allowed them to absolutely dominate the paint. Now, we said at the beginning of the show, Doug, that Leonard Hamilton has a team where he's not able to get into the depth of their bench. They don't have the same depth that Florida State teams have typically had in the past in the past. So you have guys playing a lot more minutes, but today they are by far the aggressors. And they are coming out and really setting the standard for what you see defensively on both ends. Another unforced error, this time by Mike James, who dribbled it off his foot. Yeah, Leonard Hamilton's team, all five starters with eight points or more. Mills Green. Cleveland and Worley all have eight. Corin leads all scorers with ten. The depth has been compromised with a couple of key injuries. Cameron Fletcher was injured at UVA. He's the Kentucky transfer. And then just as big, Jalen Ganey, two-time defensive player of the year in the Ivy League at Brown, coming here as a grad transfer to play for the Seminoles. Preseason injury out for the year. That changed the dynamic in terms of defensively for Florida State this year. Yeah, he was a very versatile piece that could have guard positions, you know, one through four, essentially. And that's a Swiss Army knife that just destroys you offensively and defensively not having a guy like that available. And they're the big two on top. Baba Miller, not because of injury, did miss one game with tonsillitis, but the big thing was that he missed half the season based on a suspension for travel benefits, which he received. And Green and Jackson have both missed limited time. Curry's pass taken away by Cleveland. Worley streaking to the bucket. All right. Now, this is how things are going to change next year. You ready for it, Doug? Mm -hmm. Next year, if I saw Worley coming down, if I were a Louisville player, that's going to be a hard foul. Yeah. There's going to be a rule on my team if I'm KP next year. No layups. You will end up on your back before you end up scoring the ball off a free layup in transition. It does not need to happen. And that's where you want to see Louisville take the next step 
Somebody take a hard foul. Somebody draw a line in the sand. Somebody yell at somebody. And that's why I think this team lacks. But they need to find who those players are going to be next year on this roster. Because that's what the fans deserve. That's what Kenny Payne and the staff deserve. And that is what they are saddled with every single day, every hour of every day, trying to make those determinations and work with the group they have here. Kamari Lambs gets the roll. Look, I am not worried about their offensive production. Obviously, fans are going to be worried about the turnover margin. I understand that. I, I'm not worried. About, I'm worried about the effort that we get on the defensive end and not giving up anything easily. And diving on the floor for loose balls, being the aggressor. I don't even care if you need to trash talk, Doug. Like, I'm, if we're down 15, I'm trash talking you. You have to be built differently. You have to find a way to engage your mind back in the game. Miller, Curry, Trainer, Lands, and Ellis, the five on the floor for Louisville. They've been playing from behind all afternoon. Hand up, get up in them, get up in them. Especially when you're guarding Green, an excellent three-point shooter. Corner look for Mills around and out. First to speed for Ellis, but he got cut off by Mills. Lands inside, Sidney Curry. Lays it off the glass for two. And once again, only down 11 points. I mean, right there in striking difference, distance, a lot of game, a lot of basketball left to be played here. Green step back two off the back iron. Corin on the offensive glass. Spins, shoots over Curry, no. Two and offensive rebounds Cleveland. in a row. Two offensive rebounds in a row. Timeout here at the KFC Yum Center. When we come back, a Louisville legend joins us courtside. Back inside the KFC Yum Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Joined now by a young man who knows what it's like to be in this building when it's rock and bait and seal. So, Siva, great to have you with us. First update for Jay and I, what you've been up to and what brings you back to Louisville today? Uh, first, thank you guys for having me, man. It's, it's a pleasure being on here. Just got back recently from Australia. Was over there playing in the NBL, which was a, it's a fun league. And now just back here living in Louisville, uh, coming down here to the Yum Center, enjoying watching these guys play and, you know, just seeing my Louisville alma mater. I got to tell you, man, they had highlights of you uh, a couple minutes ago. You caught a three. I forgot how bouncy yeah, man, you were. I, <laughs> <laughs> I but talk to me a little bit about, you know, hey, one of the things I loved about you as a player, you set the tone, right? The tone was always set from you at the guard position. You guys had an identity. What do you think the identity is of this team right now? What do you see on the floor when you watch them play? Well, like you said, it starts with the, the guard play. And as a point guard, you have to be an extension of the coach. And, you know, I talk to L a lot, and he's a, a wonderful kid. I love him to death. And he, got, he has to continue to lead this team, be more vocal out there on the court. And they're still trying to find their identity. And I think that's why they struggled this year. And that's why they're struggling right now. So hopefully they can find that identity soon and uh, kind of pick it up. Now, you played in two Final Fours. You won it all in 2013, even though there's not a banner up there. We know you won the tournament. What's it like for the alumni watching what this program's currently going through, Peyton? Man, it was tough. It was a tough, you know, couple years to see where they were at and with the NCAA cloud holding it over their heads. But it's good to see, you know, Kenny out there, a former alumni on the, on the sidelines, and hopefully, you know, turning this program around. You know, the fans in the city deserve it. There's nothing like them. I love them to death, and um, that's why I'm back here in Louisville myself. And as an alumni, I want to do everything I can to help these guys out, and I try to get down there as much as possible to just speak some words of wisdom to them. You know, Payne, I got yelled at by the people on social media about here we go with another analyst giving us a lecture on being patient with Kenny Payne. I guess I've just known Kenny Payne for a while. I know his network. I know how tied in this guy is to the elite of the elite players. I know people on his staff. What do you say to the fan base that says, oh, I'm tired of being patient. We've been patient <laughs> for seven years. It's tough, man. It's tough for the fans, and you get it. Uh, the fans, they love basketball. They're passionate. They want to see some results. But I see it every day. I go down to practices. I go down to individuals. And these kids are working hard, man. And it's, it's just about translating that to the game. And right now, they just got to figure that out. 
Kenny and the staff, they're an amazing staff, and they have these guys working every day. It's just about getting these guys to buy into it and getting these guys to translate it into the game. Oh, my goodness. Wait, Doug. It's all coming together right now. Wait, wait a second. You got a national champion, a guy who's been to two Final Fours, a guy that was the heartbeat of this team, a guy that lives here in this city, a guy that goes down to individuals. Are we sure, Peyton, we don't want you on the staff here? Are we, are we, are we sure? I mean, what? Hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing I'm, it out there for you now. I don't mean to put pressure on you, but there, I don't know who else better represents Louisville basketball than Peyton Siebel. Hey, man, I'm just here to help these guys out, man. I, I do a pro bono right now, so we'll see one day in the future, maybe, but I'm just here to help them out, man. Just out the, I love Louisville. I love the these kids, man, and they deserve everything. So, like I said, I'm just here to help them out whatever way I can. Well, see, let's, Doug, let's, very, very professional answer. Absolutely. Very professional. This guy's going to be a politician. Well, let's go back more than a decade, Peyton. What drew you to this program from the great Northwest? Man, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and, you know, I grew up watching, you know, basketball, grew up watching UW and loved them to death. And then once I got older, I started paying attention to the bigger picture. Uh, I had a former guy from Seattle that played out here, Terrence Williams. Mm -hmm. Got a chance to watch them in the tournament. Fell in love with their style. They got up and down. T. Will was uh, a beast, too. Man. Oh, man. Oh. Then got a chance once I watched him, watched Edgar Sosa when he was here. And I was like, man, I love that school. I got a chance to visit. The fans were amazing. And that's why I'm living here now. They just showed love, man. And you go to where you're loved. And this was the place that, you know, showed the most. And I felt like it was going to be home for me. So I wanted to come out here, prove my worth. And at the time, you guys know, the Big East was one of the top conferences in the nation. They had about 10 teams every year in the NCAA tournament. So that, that's what drew me even more. And there's no doubt that there, there's going to be an, an overhaul with this team, I mean, it, it's just, it's inevitable, right? And we always keep it a buck here when we talk from a guard possession that, you know, it's gonna be a personnel change. I, I do wanna ask you what your opinion is on Mike James, right? A younger player, tall, long, athletic, still has room for improvement from an IQ perspective, but has the talent of a high level ACC guard to me. 100%, I think Mike is one of those kids that kinda came on late and a lot of people didn't realize he was hurt his whole freshman year, so that, that took some time then he was hurt all preseason and I tell you what I told you I live here he was one of the only guys I've seen in the gym there was a couple others but I saw the work ethic every day and seeing him just put the work in you know translate into the game I was very happy for him man to see him healthy and see that translate it was amazing to see and I think he's gonna have a bright future for him yeah. Doug, that's what we were talking about earlier right that, you know it, when you see the shoot arounds not seeing guys in the gym before shoot around starts you know, in the lather. I mean, we would have saw that with your team. Even after practice is over, you guys still stayed in the gym. It's just, you know, look, if your facility, living facilities are next to the gym, that is the all-time dream for, a, for a hooper. For a hooper head, that's all I want to do. A hundred percent, man. I, I tell them all the time, like, you guys can wake up and roll across the street. You guys are right in the gym, you know. But that's just the culture now, and they got to establish a better culture. And I think they're doing that with Kenny. He's teaching these guys. They got to live in the gym, man. I mean, they're learning it now. You live in the gym, man, the results will come, and they see it right now. And that is the brand-new Denny Crum dormitory you're talking about that opened up this past fall. So Beautiful the men's place. and women's basketball teams and the uh, volleyball team are among regular students who live there, and it's literally right across. Yeah, it's an amazing place. Uh, you know, I, was, I thought Minority Hall was beautiful, and you can walk in there. It's, hey, kids these days, man, you know every. It's different. Every decade, you go, oh, man, back in my day, we didn't have this. <laughs> you know, I had it good. These guys have it great. So, <laughs> Welcome to your 30s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I mean, you guys didn't have NIL back no. then, right? Um, and I, I think one of the things that's interesting is, you know, you guys were coached hard. And I, that's what I like about Kenny Payne. Even in practice today, they were coached hard. And it's hard to be coached hard when you got the transfer portal like the way it is, and NIL where everybody just wants to be coddled. Nobody wants to be told the blunt truth. Yeah, and that's what I love about Kenny, man. He doesn't sugarcoat anything. He's going to tell these guys how it is, what it is going to be like. Who cares about your NIL deal? Who cares about this or that? You're going to come here and work. And Kenny works these guys, so it, it's good to see that. And like you said, nowadays kids, they can give up or transfer and they want to do whatever they want, but it's good to see, uh, you know, Kenny still has that old school approach. That was the third foul on Emmanuel Okorafor. I'm guessing you're still in close contact with Coach Patino and with Russ yeah, and the yeah. whole gang. I talked to him a lot. Coach P's doing good, man. He's dealing with some injuries at Iona. 
Love him to death. Um, oh, man. What a block. Russ is doing well, too. Oh, Russ man, Russ is. Doesn't he have, like, his own, like, uh, brandy or some kind of Scotch, Scotch brand, something like that? I don't know. That was, that was a nice block right there. <laughs> yeah. and I, I heard you Look at Ben's like, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Let's get back no, to No, Russ basketball. does have a, a great bourbon, man. And yeah, I, see, okay. And I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the bourbon. I don't drink, but, you know, Russ has one. This is Louisville, Kentucky, where they're known for that. So good for him. Nice three by Kamari. I mean, he's a talented freshman, too, man. If he can get that shot going, man, he can really help these guys out a lot. Have you had the opportunity to see a Cora for much? Yeah, man. Man, this kid, he's just, he's one of those kids that just, is very appreciative of what he has. He came over here from the African program, and he works hard, man. He has a great energy about him. That's a tough three right there, but he has a great energy about him, a great, you know, aura, and he just wants to be here, man. He's one of those kids that's just appreciative of the little things, and that's what these guys need, man. They need to see that, and he's just, he just enjoying this so far. See, Payne, I would disagree with you. I don't think that was a tough three. It's not a tough three when you're contesting the shot with your hands down by your waist, right? Like, I think that's something else for Louisville on that shot. Like, when you're close now, you got to have your hands up. you got to have active hands. See, I'm a Louisville fan, so I was saying that's a tough dude. Like, <laughs> oh, <I guess> <laughs> I'm not an analyst, man. I'm biased. But, but uh, you are. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I mean, you're 100% correct, man. You have to challenge a shot. And that's close to used to say in college. The percentage of a challenge shot in, the, in college is way lower than a percentage of a challenge shot in the NBA. Man, you got to put a hand up. you got to at least make them see something. Uh, their hands are down. They're higher percentage. And one. Ball. And one. And there we go, Mike James. Like we said, Mike, hell of a player, man. He, he works hard, and he's going to be a special player down the road. See, by the way, that play right there, Doug, that's what they talked about during their practice today. They said if they trap the inbound pass, slip in, make yourself available, and that's great recognition right there by Mike James, right? Sometimes when you're a younger player, you get lost in the chaos of the game. You don't think through the game. And as you see him continue to kind of evolve through the thinking process of the game. He has a chance to be special. For sure. Even a great pass by Emmanuel, man. Just to take on the double team and have the self-awareness to throw that pass. A lot of guys nowadays, the, their basketball IQ isn't really there. You know, he's, he's learning. I mean, he's been here for, what, two weeks now? He's really showing a, a bright spot for Louisville. He has, and we talked about it off the top, Peyton, that they are asking an 18-year-old who wasn't even in the country a month ago to Look at set that. It's a nice block right there, man. He's, it brings energy, that's, and that's what Louisville needs, man. They need a, that breath of fresh air that they haven't had in a while, and he's, he's, he's doing really well out there. Eight minutes into the second half, Peyton Siva, the Louisville legend, scored over 1,200 points during his four years for Coach Patino. Join kick, us. kick, kick. Ellis fouled. And again, thank you so much for joining us, Pete. Great to see you. Oh, uh, thank you, you guys for my job. You come to my job. No, no chance. <laughs> okay, no shot. Pretty damn good. <laughs> to you, it may just be an elevator. Here goes nothing. But for a young Florida State with the 11-point lead over Louisville, my partner Jay Williams, you had a pretty good career at Duke, I would say. Yeah, I think versus North Carolina, I was seven and two. Not that I remember every single detail of every game, but well, I pretty much do. Wait a second, your math doesn't add up. How could you be seven and two if our graphics oh, say seven you played and eight one. Games? Seven and one. Okay. Right. All right. Seven and one. 177 total points, 42 assists, 24 steals. Your number one memory from a game against Carolina is <sighs> probably the year we won it. Uh, we lost Carlos Boozer uh, to Maryland, and we had to go play in North Carolina Senior Night. And uh, it was our last game of the regular season mm -hmm. to get a share of the regular season ACC title. And uh, we just came in there, and we actually implemented the Golden State Warriors style of play of basketball before the Golden State Warriors. We went small. Shane Battier was our five, just like similar to Draymond Green. And we just shot so many threes, myself, Mike Dunleavy, Chris Duhon, um, you know, and Shane Battier, it, it was, and Nate James. It was a lot of fun. And I think that's how we actually found a rhythm to win the whole thing. And again, we're looking forward to the rematch tonight, 6.30 on ESPN, the renewal of the greatest rivalry in college basketball. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I, wow. Foul on James. I on need to see a replay of that. Cleveland. I need to see a replay of that. I mean, that is what athleticism right there. But I like that. Go meet him at the rim. Oh, that's clean. That is clean. I think that is clean. 
He's going vertical. Cleveland is initiating the contact. That looked like all ball to me. Third personal foul on Mike James. But once again, Doug, what was the mindset right there by your young player? No, nothing easy. You're not getting a layup in transition. We're going to meet you at the rim, or we're going to give you a hard foul. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought Peyton Siva's insight was fantastic on so many things, but he talked about the fact that Mike James, you know, he missed an entire season rehabbing from a torn Achilles tendon. Then in the offseason over the summer and the fall, he had multiple hamstring injuries. And so not until really we've gotten into ACC player, we starting to see the ball player he was a couple of years ago. I mean, look at Kevin Durant, the way he's responded off an Achilles injury. And, you know, it's been one of the best Achilles comes back of all time. But he still also had multiple injuries because you end up compensating with your body. Well, he has, he has followed Kevin Durant. He's followed and learned from Dominique Wilkins, who was somebody who decades ago came back from that injury. Mm. And he said Edmund Sunders is another guy currently in the NBA who came back from that. And he says that those rehabs gave him, Mike James, a blueprint for how to do it himself. Cleveland the block shot. He's got Green in the corner, can't find him. Instead, bring it back out to House. Inside Corrin. Creates space. What and the layup. Corrin is a pro. Like, he's going to be a pro. His footwork is impeccable. And also right there, he initiated the contact and didn't rush a quick shot. That's what you love from his style of play. And he's every bit 6'10", 225, just a freshman. Oh, Pretty yes. move by L. Ellis. Oh, I love that. I love the hustle. That would have given Kamari Lands a new career high. He's at 15, which he scored first time against the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Ellis dancing with the ball here. I mean, he is so dynamic with the basketball and has an array of shots at the rim. And when he's able to get going offensively, he's one of the most prolific scorers there is in the ACC conference. And he draws so much attention with the ball because of that dynamic ability to get to the rack. Guys just need to be ready with their hands to knock down open shots when he gets in the paint. That was a core for his fourth foul. So again, his minutes on the floor being limited with the foul difficulties. Our college basketball lineup rolls on all afternoon over on ESPN at 4 Eastern. Number one, Purdue takes on Indiana. Then your alma mater, Duke, taking on North Carolina inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. I know who you're rooting for. Who do you think? Who do you like in that game between your Blue Devils I'm, and the Tar There's really no other team to like that, really. Is this a trick question? Seeing what you'd say. No, it's personal. Seeing it's okay. what you'd say. I get it's it. It's personal. It's okay. It's allowed to be personal. You know, you, I think North Carolina is one heck of a team. I, I think they've had some challenges. Um, I, I think it's been a difficult year for Caleb Love and obviously Baycott battling some injuries. But if, if you're Duke, this is a game you got to get at home. Cleveland, offensive, offensive, offensive foul. foul. And good job by Miller just being a nuisance. Being there, right? You, you talk about if you're down double digits, just pressing up and putting putting Florida State in position to make mistakes. Just saying, Hersey, break them off some. Yeah, just being there, right there, and forcing offensive foul. You can't push off like that if you're Cleveland. And on Cleveland, just his first foul of the day. Ellis streaking in, Miller. To Great ball movement. Trainer to find the wide open Jalen Withers. That, by the way, was Louisville's first points of the day off of a turnover. And at the other end, Kayla Mills puts in the three ball from the corner. If I can turn and face and see the rim, I'm going to have a shot at the basket. I mean, you have to get a hand up every time Louisville contests a shot. Their hands are down by the offensive player's knees instead of having one hand up and one hand down being active. Jalen Withers can shoot. There's no question about that. 14 points to lead the Cardinals. 
Hanging around. Can they get a stop or two? Green, tough shot. No, they get that stop. Now can they cash in at the other end? Mouse in the house. Mouse in the house. There you go. Punishing. Good job. Curry kicks to the corner. It's a good shot, though. Miller, though, misfired. Mills with a quick first step with the left hand no. Sidney Curry corrals the rebound. Ellis with his head up. Attacks. And one. Oh. Blocking foul. And he will shoot two. Like that right, right before the under eight timeout. I like the push there by Ellis. Both teams are gassed right now. I haven't had a timeout in a while. Multiple possessions. But find a way to get to the free throw line. Create contact. See the ball go. That was the third foul on Darren Green, sending Ellis, a 78% foul shooter, to the line. The King, LeBron, continues his quest to pass Kareem to become the NBA's all-time leading scorer later when the Lakers take on the Pelicans 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, right here on ESPN2 and ESPN+. Plus. He's just 63 points from the record. And here's our NBA Saturday primetime matchup on ABC and the ESPN app. Should be a good one. Luke in the Mavs. In San Francisco to take on Steph and the Warriors coverage with NBA countdown begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Want to know when LeBron's going to break it? Uh, when he catches Kareem. At home against the Milwaukee Bucks, a team that Kareem has played for with the skyhook. Mark it down. And that would allow Kareem to be there in person. Kareem will be in L.A. if the game is happening there. He won't be able to be on the road. Timeout here in Louisville. Cardinals down 10. And what if I want a new car? State Farm's here to have. Next here at 4 o'clock Eastern time, Keontae Johnson, Wooden Ward, watch list top 20 guy, take it on Texas, K State and Texas. Next top 10 matchup. Dougie, turtleneck, back to you. Dallin and guys, thanks so much. Back here in Louisville where Coach Leonard Hamilton's team trying to move to six and seven in ACC play. He's got five different players, all of his starters in double figures, but a missed front end by Naheem McLeod and the Cardinals, Jay, just keep hanging around. Miller and Ellis in the backcourt together. This is Ellis over the excellent shot blocker. And McLeod picks up the personal. I love that. I love the spacing by Ellis to get into the gap. Stop the clock, make two free throws, come back down on the defensive end, get another stop. Look, this Florida State team, it's hard for them to get into a lot of gaps, right? They use their size, their height. They got a ton of offensive rebounds in this ball game. You know, and the one thing that Louisville has to have to keep them off the offensive glass. And that is where Florida State has been able to make their mark. Not shooting a high clip at first, but getting that second chance points is what's killing them. Well, Jay, this is the closest the game has been since the start of the second half when it was 45 36. Ellis with a couple of free throws. He leads all Cardinals with 16 points. We talked about teams finding identity, right? Like right now, I see Louisville way more connected than I have the entire game. Worley Green, Cleveland, Mills, and McLeod out there for the Seminoles. Green. Cardinals get another stop. Wolver got a little bit lucky on that one. Wiggles got hit with a back screen. They worked on that back screen today in practice, and Green got an open three, just missed it. Great play. Ellis. Offensive rebound, and Louisville will keep it as the shot was blocked out of bounds. Here's what I love about the way Louisville is playing, and they worked on this today in practice as well. Driving the baseline, the opposite side, drifting towards the corner. Look, here's the drive, baseline, pass with the left hand, and rotating the ball quickly. The defense can't get out there, knocking down the three. Like I said before, Louisville just playing way more connected basketball 
of penetration and sharing the rock. Trainer. Big time. The friendly roll. It's a six point ball game. Look at the body language of Louisville. They're engaged. Good help from the weak side. Timeout for Florida State. Louisville on a 9 0 run forces Coach Ham to use a TO. Wendy's. With former Duke All American Jay Williams, I'm Doug Sherman. Louisville creeping back to within six. This one's the second half for Louisville. Just, I mean, a lot of penetration. Actually taking care of the basketball. Not a lot of those careless turnovers that you saw in the first half. Really good job getting into those gaps, being strong and finishing. And look, you know, Florida State has had a tendency sometimes to take their foot off the gas. We've seen it in the Florida game. We've seen it in the other games where they allow teams to come back. And now it's like getting stops in the defensive end. Four to shoot. Worley's got to put it up. Shot clock violation. And many of the fans here at the KFC Yum Center remain on their feet for their Cardinals. That's the matchup. You have a mismatch on Curry down low. There's a small on Curry. Uh, now you give them the matchup they wanted. Four on the shot clock. Miller penetrates, loses his footing, no call. And there's the shot clock violation. That's where sometimes you just wish they had a floor general that could pull the ball out and see that Curry had a small on him. Instead of having Curry come out for a ball screen so they can switch the small back on Ellis, you allow him to post up. That's where you've gotten all the mismatches. Worley snaps the Louisville run. We talked so much today in practice about the bigs being up on those screens, communicating to the guards where the screen is coming from. Curry did not communicate. Trainer, no. Miller tracks down the long rebound, and the possession continues with just oh. over five minutes remaining. Ellis into the lane. Tough shot. And it goes. Oh, I love college basketball. Let's go. Corin back to Cleveland. Long three. Off the front iron. Cardinals down six, trying to press it up floor. Ellis end to end. His shot hit the bottom of the backboard and went out of bounds back to FSU. They're going to see Florida State here come off the ball screen and find a way to get to the rim. And that's where Curry just has to communicate where that ball screen is coming from to the guard who is applying pressure. And the, the bigs are the backbone of the defense, Doug. They have to be the most vocal people on the court. That's all Kenny Payne talked about today in practice. We will go as our bigs communicate defensively. Now Worley will look to initiate, takes the ball screen, and it's an illegal screen against Camp Corin. Curry just doing a way better job being up on the screen. And that's what you want, pressing up, getting over the top. Yeah. I'm really sure if that was an illegal screen. Didn't really see a lot of movement there. Nonetheless, it is his second personal. Just over four minutes to go. So once again, 
Now he got a small on him. He got a small on him. Give him the ball. He got a mismatch on Curry. Instead, Alice spins into lane and draws the foul, which will take us to break. Hey, look, if Florida State wants to switch all that action, that's fine. Whoever the smallest guarding Curry, give him the ball down low on the block. Kiss, sometimes you gotta keep it simple, though. At Domino's, we appreciate those who get off the couch. To Front runner for National Player of the Year of the rival Indiana. Well, that's the lowest we'll see the ball being dribbled by him all day <laughs> right there. Fans should really watch. This guy is ahead of the defense when he gives the ball up. Watch the position he gets to get offensive rebounds and to repost. Just under seven minutes that tips off over on ESPN. We got a tight finish here. Let's get to Louisville. Doug, to Jay Wolf. Thank you, Dallin. Louisville right back in this basketball game after trailing by double figures for most of this second half, but they have been different in the last few minutes, Jay. Well, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. I've seen more communication in the second half than I have from Louisville, you know, for the last couple of games. Uh, and taking care of the ball is critical. And now, th th these are the best moments of a college basketball game. The game is somewhat tight. The team's ability to execute the details down the stretch typically win the game. Everybody for Louisville right now seeing Manu Ball. Good job getting over the screen, communicating. Mills no. back out, long three green. No. Offensive Big rebound. offensive board for Cleveland. What did we talk about, Doug? We said offensive rebound will be key down the stretch. Got to keep Florida State off the glass. So Louisville's got to defend for another 20 seconds. This time they secure the rebound. That's what you want up your Louisville. You want them to settle for a contested three. Trainer calling for the ball. He's got it. Give it to him. Sidney Curry muscles his yeah. way through the defender for two more. It's a two point ball game. Timeout, Seminoles. Kenny Payne today in practice talked about Curry wanting the basketball. Who is stopping that man child on the block? Nobody, Doug. If he cracks into them first, whenever he sees a Florida State defender standing up, he cracked into him, got post position, and finished strong. And that's what they worked on. And that's the same Sidney Curry we saw late last season and now Jay he's got his weight back under control and is much more able to do that. But a lot of times Doug for bigs to have that size and frames they wait they wait for the defensive player to create contact for them and we, we always talk about this in the league and we talk about this whenever you play basketball no you don't wait for them to create contact. you initiate the contact you be the aggressor you carve out space who is stopping Curry from creating space down low on the block? I don't care what college, you can put a seven footer on him, you can put somebody, he has the frame to carve out space. You want him to do that consistently because this will change ultimately how Louisville plays basketball. Well, the Cardinals are on a 15 to two run. On the flip side, what do the Seminoles need to do and who do they need to look to at this point, Jack? They need to stop settling for contested three point shots. They need to find a way to get the ball to the rim, get to the free throw line. Seems like the last several possessions, the offenses became stagnant and they've settled for contested threes. A 15 point lead has been trimmed to two by a Louisville team looking for its second consecutive win. And while that wouldn't normally be noteworthy in this season, it would be a huge achievement for the Cardinals. Doug, let me ask you who do you think is Florida State's best player? At the moment, probably Matthew Cleveland. So I I've been watching Florida State for a while. Matthew Cleveland has all the skills to be the best. The one thing I wonder about him sometimes is it seems like he can disappear in games. I would like to see him be aggressive and take the game over when it matters the most. Here he is with the basketball in his hands. Tough shot and Louisville can tie or take the lead.
The lob to the rim. Ooh. And the dunk ties it. Trainer from Ellis on the huge alley -oop. Worley cut off, gets it back out to the corner for Mills. Ten to shoot. Curry with the rejection, but the follow slam by Corin puts FSU back in front. Here comes the ball screen by Curry and the switch defensively. They switch. They switch. Ellis around Corin. Goaltending. And Florida State, once again, ball pressure, hand down. What a great pass by Ellis over the top. And Trainer to slam it down. I mean, this game has me standing on my feet, though. This you, is what basketball is. You and everybody else in the building, Jay. Worley Got on the back sleeping. cut. Cleveland lays it in. Great set for the Knowles. Great pass there by Worley. Trainer just got caught standing up, lost his man. Ellis hands to James. Out there with Trainer, Withers, and Curry. Shot clock down to 10. Great job by Florida State, pressure in the ball. Timeout, Louisville. Louisville just not able to get into their operating zone, right? Operating offensively, you want to get towards the three point line. Florida State's defense had them pushed all the way out between half court and the three point line. So they have to work for that space. Guys have to work to become available on the offensive end when Florida State is playing those passing lanes. And it appeared when Kenny Payne called that timeout, he was staring at the man who was holding the ball, Mike James, about killing a dribble, perhaps. A uh, younger player, you don't pick up your dribble in that situation, right? If anything, we call it an escape dribble, which means if you're pressuring me, you know, I'm going to reverse pivot. Use a hard back step just to create some space to let my team calm down. But this is where we go into, Doug, the floor general of this team. You know, you want the ball in Ellis's hands, but you want also somebody that can say, everybody, just relax. Take a second. Here's the set that we're in. Let's execute it. Kenny Payne has to be that player now, that extension of that player on the floor for them. That's why he called the timeout. Withers has been hot again today. Consecutive games, four of six from distance. Trainer. With the big alley-oop slam a moment ago, Curry's out there with James and Ellis. Look for a pin down from Curry, getting Ellis the ball. I get Curry and Ellis in the high ball screen. Instead, they go to Trainer, hand it back to James, trying to work on Worley. Four to shoot, three. Ellis is in a bad spot. The contested deep three is off the mark. Great and it takes the course, air yeah. out of the building. Louisville's got to give the foul with only two seconds difference between game and shot clock. So James comes up and commits the personal on Worley, who is a 65% foul shooter. Well, Matthew Cleveland has his 10th double double of the year, 15 points, 10 rebounds. And for the 17th consecutive game, he has reached double figures in scoring. And that was the fourth foul on Mike James as Jalen Worley, the sophomore from Mount Airy, Pennsylvania, out of Westtown School, makes the front end. 65% free throw shooter by Worley. Really good job by him knocking down the first. He knocks down the second. I think you're going to see Florida State apply some full court pressure, getting Louisville to use some of the clock. Yep, they're going to press up. Worley gets them both. And with a timeout, let's send it back to Dallin. Thanks, Doug. Underway on the app, you get the top 10 matchup. Texas on the road to Kansas State, a battle atop the Big 12. Marquise Noel, Noel, Keontae Johnson, Marcus Carr, a bunch of studs there. That game will start here on ESPN2 when our game concludes. Back to you guys for the finish in the bill. Thank you, sir. 25.6 remaining in regulation. So now what is the strategy down to possession? You got to get something quick. You get a quick two. You do not need to take a three-point shot. 25.6 seconds is a long time 
in a basketball game. Louisville just used their last time out, though, on this play. So you get a quick two, and then you try to get a quick steal. If you don't get a quick steal, you, you get a quick foul. You extend the number of possessions in the ball game by putting Florida State on the free throw line. Win or lose this ball game, what have you seen from Louisville coming back in the last nine minutes from 15 down? I'm seeing a team that is collectively playing for themselves. You know, and, and that was our biggest question coming into this game, is that when you get embarrassed over and over and over again, there has to be a certain point that you draw a line in the sand. And you say, we're not playing for anybody else but our own pride. And I think what we've seen in the second half is a Louisville team that is communicating, they are playing with a sense of urgency, and they are defending. And when they do those things, that is the extension of Kenny Payne on the floor. And by the way, that is what Louisville fans want to see. They want to see that consistent effort from the second half Louisville team. Al Ellis with a big second half scoring the basketball now with 22 points total to lead all scores. Kamari Lanz has matched his career high with 15. Jalen Withers has 14. And it'll be J.J. Trainer to inbound. Shot clock is off. Let's see if they go for the quick two with Ellis. Off the hesitation, leaves his feet. Curry lays there it goes. in. Now press up. Now if you're Louisville, you press up. You try to create a quick turnover. Trap, trap, trap. Foul given by Ellis. I'm okay with the foul, but see, I, when he catches the ball like that, like, that is the worst place to catch the ball. With 15 seconds left, somebody needs to be counting in their head 15, 14, because you can use the sideline and the baseline as extra defenders. I would have trapped there for a couple of seconds, seeing if you can get a quick turnover rather than just go to a quick foul. So Ellis picks up his third personal foul. Trainer, to me, was a little slow coming for the trap. Do you think he should have waited for him to get there to trap the ball with time being so precious? Yeah, I mean, I, I still think it's worth me to catch the ball in those spots. Darren Green, a 90% foul shooter for the Seminoles. That's why I try to trap for a couple of seconds because I'm sending their team's best free throw shooter to the line. Seminoles executed, getting Oof. it into his hands. He's one out of two, and it's a three-point game. Ellis. That's tough. Tough shot, doesn't tough. go. Curry kept it alive. Got three no seconds, time possession. two seconds Big Big for shot. the tie. And the Seminoles escape with an 81-78 victory. Just seemed like Ellis, I'm, I'm curious if he actually knew that they were down three there in that particular situation. Um, I would like to see him try to take a step back three more so than try to finish through all the trees. He hasn't really been that highly efficient at